If you are planning on an unmedicated childbirth experience, your doctors and nurses are going to be very supportive of you and help you through the experience. There's only one reason why your doctor would strongly encourage you to get an epidural, um, just starting out, going into it, knowing that that's what you should do. And um, if you've had a previous C-section in the past and you're going to um, try a VBAC or a vaginal birth after a C-section, then your doctor will want you to have an epidural in place to reduce the risk of complications. So if that's not you and you haven't had a previous C-section, then there's no need to worry about that. But as a labor and delivery nurse, there's two times when I do encourage my patients to get epidurals if they've gone into the process having previously not wanted one. The first is if it's going to be best for you. Let me tell you a story to illustrate it. One time I had a patient who had been seven centimeters for four hours and she'd been in labor in the hospital for about 14 to 15 hours before that. So we're about 20 hours into the process and she's exhausted and she's dancing all over the room. She's screaming. She won't let me touch her. She's yelling at her husband and they're not bonding. It's a terrible experience for them. And she's also not um, open to listening to staff, both the nurses and the doctors. And um, I knew in my mind that the reason that she wasn't changing is because she wasn't relaxing. She wasn't coping well with the pain because you can be counterproductive and work against yourself if you don't take slow, deep breaths in through your nose, out through your mouth, stay focused and on top of the pain. So um, I, I talked to her. I sat down with her in between contractions, obviously, and, and discussed reasons for her not wanting the epidural in the first place. And it turned out that she just didn't want, to want it because she was afraid of needles. And I addressed her fears and she, she decided to get an epidural and she was completely dilated or 10 centimeters after having been previously stuck at seven centimeters for four hours, which is not common, about 20 minutes after she got her epidural. And it was because her body was just able to relax and it was like, thank you so much, I can do my job. So that's one thing to keep in mind when you go into the experience. Keep an open mind and don't necessarily shut the door on not getting an epidural because there are times when it is appropriate and it will help you. The other reason why I encourage patients to get an epidural is if it's going to be best for their baby. And let me explain that one. Um, everyone, until the baby's shoulders or toes are out, I guess you could say too, is at risk for a C-section. And um, we don't know who it's going to be or when it's going to happen, but we do know that there are definitely times when a mother needs a C-section in order to ensure the safety of her and her baby. Um, we would prefer to use an epidural to uh, make it so that the patient doesn't feel pain during the procedure. Otherwise, our only option is general anesthesia. What you would think of if you went to the hospital, get your appendix out, where we knock you out and we have to put a tube down your throat and breathe for you. But in giving the mother medications to do this, these medications get into her bloodstream and get to the baby and cause the baby to also essentially have the same effects. They come out sleeping and not wanting to be alive. And so many times we have to fully resuscitate babies who are born to a mother who's been under general anesthesia. Obviously, we do all we can to reduce the, the risk of these complications, but if I was your labor nurse and, and there were things going on that indicated that your chance of C-section is higher, like your cervix stopped progressing or um, your baby was having a lot of dips in the heart rate, those sorts of things, then I would encourage you to get an epidural because in the long run, it is safer for both you and the baby to have an epidural for a C-section versus general anesthesia. If you have an epidural during a C-section, you're totally awake, you're totally alert. An epidural doesn't affect your mental status and you're still able to enjoy the birth of your baby. You can hear them cry for the first time and you can see them and still be present for it. And um, that's just one more advantage for you if you have an epidural versus general anesthesia for a C-section. But um, talk about your fears and your concerns with your doctor and they can um, discuss those in more detail with you. All complications aside, if you're doing well and your baby's doing well through labor, you're able to cope well with the pain, your baby's tolerating labor well, and we can see that by watching the pattern of your baby's heart rate, um, then it's totally fine to, to go through labor without an epidural. And I would be excited for you if I was your nurse and do everything I could to help you through the process. And I'm sure that the caregivers you're going to have are going to do the same. If you have any other questions for me, feel free to ask them on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash intermountain moms and recommend us to your friends and family too.